What's up guys, it is JTB Gaming here, and as you can t tell from the title, we're doing something very different, a little bit off-brand for this channel. I have to switch things up, things aren't doing, things are kind of going, eh, not so great, we'll say. So I'm switching things up, we're going to do, try to do maybe one of these more one video rebuilds. So in this video, w one video long, taking Longford Town, the worst team in FIFA 22, to the best team and win the Champions League. Now obviously, I'm not gonna be like, not gonna be like going by overalls. You're not gonna go through, look at the team sheets of all the best teams, and you know, no, I'm not gonna do all that. We're just going here, going from the bottom of the Irish League and going to win the title. The only game, the only game in this entire series that I will be playing will be the Champions League final. Everything else is just gonna be simmed. That way, I mean, I can't really fake the results, and I also can't really control the results so it's purely based on the team not on me until obviously get to the Champions League final and then from that point on I mean we should win that game so I mean as you can see we are a half star team I mean 55 overall attack 54 midfield 53 defense the team is not good I'm just gonna admit that they have nothing there's no no hope all these players will hopefully be gone by the end of this year definitely by next year so there's gonna be a lot of transfers happening early. I mean, even just like looking at the team, I mean, Dobbs is like, I think he has the highest potential. I think it's 63. So there's no hope with this team. It's gonna be a lot of bringing in and getting rid of. Youth Academy is gonna be a huge part in this, especially early on. I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to buy players later on because of the fact that people don't wanna come and play here. Unless we're getting regular like Europa League or Champions League action, I don't think anybody from any top tiers, any top leagues, and really the five major leagues will actually want to come and play for us. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But like I said, Youth Academy will be a huge part, starting off by sending a three-star, three-star scout in Ireland for nine months, just trying to get some players. Have a one-star, one-star scout going to Australia and just the hopes he can somehow get a good player. And same goes for our scout going to New Zealand. Flavio De Luca is a preloaded in Youth Academy player who will be joining the first team and is already our best player. Italian right mid. He's six foot, quite pacey, very good all round midfielder, so could be a good player to build around, at least for now. Carl Chambers has been sold to fellow Irish side Drogheda United. He will be leaving for 150000 Callum Warfield will be joining Finn Harps for 150000 Aaron McGabe will be joining Indian side ATK Mohu Bagan for 120000 And joining the team from Youth Academy is the young Irish goalkeeper Patrick McCall. I don't know if that's, how you, that's how I'm going to say it. I don't know if that's actually how you say it. Um, six foot three, uh, half sweeper keeper development plan on him to get that positioning up. Other than that, he's a solid keeper and will be our number one. Andrew McClelland will be joining the first team and will be starting at that left mid position. I'm not going to show every single Youth Academy player that gets promoted, only the ones that actually have a chance of playing. So obviously in this case, McCallan gets shown. Aaron McNally has been sold to Oldham Athletic in EFL League 2. I actually plan on doing a series with them in the future, so if you're a fan of them, stay tuned for $145,000. Ben Lynch has been sold to Northeast United in India for $125,000. And at the halfway point in the league, we're sitting in fourth. We are only two points off of a European spot, or well, at least a chance. No, there is no automatic qualifications, I believe, for any of the European leagues in from this Irish division. I think every conference league, Europa League, and Champions League, I'm pretty sure you have to go through a playoff. So, like, even that just adds an extra layer of difficulty. It's not even like we win the league, we're guaranteed to be, if not the Champions League, in the Europa League. Like, there's still a whole process we have to go through. Lee Stacy has been sold to Hyperabad FC for a quarter of a million. And Zombra will be departing the club when his contract expires, joining fellow Irish side St. Pat's. Byrne will be joining Kalmar FF in Sweden. Aiden Kane will be joining the team from the Youth Academy. Irish left back, 58 overall. Not the greatest potential, but 58 overall, that's good enough to be an instant starter. Durbin has been sold to Portville for 390k, so we're starting to get a couple higher 
transfers i mean it's, we still did still only get 250 allocated to our tr transfer budget but it's still better than nothing and cn quinn is joining the team from northern ireland he's one of those players that i love to get at the beginning of any of these saves where they're just a pure athlete because i mean let's be honest like once you get to us there's really a thing at fifa a certain point i think it's like 72 overall kind of like that range where you have to have the you know the, the skills needed obviously for, for your position but when you're down here in you know these bad divisions we're playing like 60 65 overall players if you're just fast enough and strong enough you can make up for a lot of those tiny mistakes and that's why i love players like this where they're just extremely pacey have all the physical stats and then I get to choose how to improve their technical skills. Just personally, it's I kind of like it. I like the journey that goes on along with it. And obviously, get to the point where they end up being pretty good. Darren Haynes has been sold to Crawley Town for 140k. Sean Gold has been sold to King Dow FC, who I did a crew mode on, if you want to watch that. And joining the team from Youth Academy is Connor Booth, the Australian center forward I'm converting to attacking midfielder. He's 6'2", 77 to 94 potential. He's going to be a good player, especially with dynamic potential. Him starting right away, that will obviously help as well. Now, I won my first Manager of the Month award for the month of August. Yeah, for the month of August, so first of hopefully many. Aaron Dobbs has been sold to Finn Harps for 260k. Aaron Robinson has been sold to Sanderfjord over in... Norway, I believe, for 145k. Um, Kelly will be departing his club. He'll be joining Shamrock Rovers once his contract expires. Davis will be doing the same, except he's going to Chinyan FC. Philip McKenna will be joining the team from the Youth Academy. I mean, nothing great, but has a chance to actually play. Chris Ennis will be joining the team to hopefully one day be our starting striker. He's six foot two. Very quick, very good natural dribbler. Just need to put a development plan on him to get that shooting up. And hopefully he's their striker one day. I want manager of the month for the month of November as well. And in the league, we ended up finishing in third place, which means Europa League qualification playoffs. And then after that, I think it's in the conference league. So there's a chance for playing European football next year. I highly doubt we'll win any games. But at least that's some extra gains, some extra revenue. And we did end up winning the EA Sports Cup 2-1. to one, So we did get a trophy in our first year. So not at all that bad. Manly led the team in goals, scored with 16. Just behind him with DeLuca with 11. And DeLuca led the team in assists with 7. So he really has taken on the role of our best player. So um, this is the formation I'm thinking of using next year. Having Booth and Quinn play center mid, play a 3-4-3. That way, with Youth Academy, I can just set a scout for wingers, and that covers, you know, like a third of the players I need to get. Honestly, probably the entire front seven, because you can get some strikers from there. You can also get some center mids from there, so that's just kind of what I'm thinking. All right, Season 2 is now underway, and we're still a half-star team. We, we've made small improvements, but we haven't made any big jumps and it's that's honestly okay i mean you can see from mccullough kane deluca booth they're already 60 plus overall so it's way better than we had before so now it's all just kind of about building on that foundation we already have now we're setting up a scout in argentina for nine months to get some wingers obviously when you play the 343 you need to have some good outside midfielders also going to Brazil for nine months to get some attackers. So I'm this season really going into developing our offense and then we can worry about our defense later. Because I am just sending a four-star, two-star scout to Ireland for, to get some defenders. So not expecting any long-term solutions, a lot short-term. Flynn has been sold to St. Fjord for 195K. Trost has been sold to Finn Harps for 125K. Kai Williams has been sold to Harrogate Town for 230k. And if you were paying attention at all from the last couple of minutes, and really in season one, you saw that there was this man, Jason Rooney, in the Youth Academy, who was so good. He's been in 60 plus overall pretty much the entire time. Extremely high potential. But he was too young. He was only 15 years old. So now 
He's finally 16, 65 overall, 89 to 94 potential. He's going to be starting at that left center back role, and he should have potential to be special. And with dynamic potential, who knows how good he can get. Kyle Farrell will be joining to play in that back line. Maybe. I don't know. Chris Ennis will be going a short loan move to Norwegian side Tromso IL. He's just not he's just not good enough, I don't think. Plus sending him out on loan. Hopefully they can just and overall can increase quite rapidly. Peter Cassidy will be joining Sligo Rovers for a 400 k Rory Austin will be joining the team from the Youth Academy. I mean, pretty good potential, decent overall. Should be able to fit him in that rotation. Shane Elworth will be joining Sutton United for 210k. And at the halfway point, we're not doing as good as we were last year if you just look at the standings. But if you look at the points, we're two points off of first. So it's a very, very tight second half to the season. Hopefully we can get some good results and end up on top. And we did make the playoff round of the Conference League. We were facing off against Sweden. No, Norwegian. No. Yes, Norwegian side mold. Now, uh, yeah, the first game we lost 3-1. to and the second game, we drew 1-1. to one. We crashed out of the Conference League after a 4-2 loss on aggregate. But it was pretty expected. Aiden Kane has picked up an injury. He's going to be out for seven weeks, which is quite the issue because it is towards the end of our season. And again, we are trying to push to get a you know, top three finish yet again. I won Manager of the Month in the month of September. And again in October. So even without Kane, we've done quite well. Good enough to finish us in second place. One point above third and fourth. Um, but hey, second place, I think that means we get Europa League playoffs. I think it's, you know, first is Champions League playoffs, second Europa League playoffs, third Conference League playoffs. So I think that guarantees us a spot in the Conference League next year. And obviously chance at Europa League. So European football, I think, is actually going to happen next year. And for the second year in a row, we did win the EA Sports Cup. DeLuca was our top goal scorer with 19. And Booth and Austin, two young players, were up there with 11 and 10. DeLuca led the team in assists with 7. And honestly, towards the end, I kind of gave up on trying to convert both Quinn and Booth to center mids. So I switched to a 3-4-3 diamond, a little bit different look. But I mean, looking at the team... I think we just need a little bit of time you know i think we got some good young players hopefully ennis is better at that striker position other than that nothing else really needs to be changed we have finally done it we are no longer a half star team we are now officially a one star team longford town one star team i mean the team isn't great but we don't need to be great we just need to be good enough Manly has been sold to FCU Cryova, who I think I'm doing a series on in the future. Not 100% sure. Uh, for 620k, so we get we're starting to get a little bit of money for these players we're selling. And I was able to afford this three-star, four, three, oh no, four-star, five-star scout, and he is going to Ireland for nine months. And then gotta go back to our roots, going to Australia, and finally going to New Zealand. And we are into the season, and already we've won Manager of the Month. Got the Manager of the Month award for February, so we are things are off to a very good start. And strange transfer here, I'm not going to lie. Um, I decided to sell Flavio De Luca. I mean, we get an extra $1.1 I mean, you just, you just keep... Where we are right now, cannot pass up this offer. And he's going to be staying with the club through until the summer transfer window opens, so we still get him for a little bit of time boss we have some good young players in the youth academy that can just kind of cycle in and replace him philip mckenna has agreed to a two-year loan move for al Hali. now this is a little bit of a spoiler and this will not be the first time this happens in this series but fifa it does not like it when you do two-year loans or really yeah really two-year loans with any of the teams in the Irish League to teams that are not on the same schedule. Because in the Irish League, the season starts at the beginning of the year and it ends at the end of the year. It isn't like most European teams where it start, you know, mid, mid to late August and finish up mid to late May. So he just disappears, by the way. He goes on alone and he, he just never comes back. I tried looking him up, could not find him. So 
and yeah, um, he's essentially been sold for free. Daniel Byrne will be joining the team. Six foot three Irish center defensive midfielder. I mean, he's a unit. And him going into that center defensive mid role, I'm probably going to be moving Quinn from defensive mid to center back. So a little bit of changing up for the team there. And the guy who will hopefully replace DeLuca is Ruben Dickinson, New Zealand born left midfielder. 80 to 94 potential, 61 overall. These are the type of players that we need to be getting now because we just need the quick, I mean, with that high potential and dynamic potential, that immediate quick rapid boost up and overall should be what takes us over the edge. Halfway through the league, we are currently in second place behind Bohemian FC, who are just taking the league by storm. They're playing extremely well, so don't know if we're actually going to be able to beat them. Jaden Nicholson is another one of those players again from New Zealand where 81 to 94 potential 65 overall need them to take that huge jump forward as quick as possible he'll be joining the team at that right mid position really love the fact that our four star two star scout is getting better players than our four star five star scout at not that different of countries in Republic of Ireland and New Zealand and Leonardo Martins is joining the team to play at that striker position until Ennis returns from loan and then we'll have a little bit of a striker competition but yeah, as you could have told, by, told, seen by the background, we are in the Conference League now. We've been drawn in Group H with Napoli, Standard Liège, Alborg, BK. Um, I don't think we're going to win a single game. Maybe we could beat Alborg, but Napoli are very good. Liège are pretty good, so it might be a very unfortunate year for us. Rory Austin has been sold to Kashima Antlers for $2.3 million. We get 1.6 in the transfer budget. He's no longer a starter. We got much better players coming up from the youth academy, so we'll get some good change for him. Peter Kinsella is joining the team. 66 overall, right back. 76 to 82 potential. That good. He's going to be an instant starter. We did not finish in a European spot this year. We ended up finishing in fourth, which I found very surprising. Was not even expecting that. But yeah, we are not in Europe next year. Unless we win the Conference League. And we also didn't win the Cup. We got knocked out 2-0 by Sligo Rovers. So this was definitely a step backwards in this series. But might actually be a little bit better. You know, we don't have the European competition to kind of focus on to drain our energy. Because we finished last in our group. But we did get a win. So, I mean, I'm just going to take it. We, I really don't care. We got a win. Ennis led the team in goal scored with 18. Booth just behind him with 12. Booth led the team in assists with 10. So yeah, we're now playing a 4-1-3-2. Uh, back line is very solid. Midfield is pretty good as well. Up top is very good as well. So maybe, just maybe, win the title next year. Maybe go a little bit further. Maybe make it out of the group stage in Europe. I mean, these, these are really big, fingers crossed, unlikely to happen. All right, starting off this next season, we'll be signing the free agent Argentinian center midfielder Ruben Dominguez. 1.85k wage, pretty good, pretty cheap, 65 overall. And Leonardo Martins has been sold to Saudi Arabian side Al Shabab for 2.7 million. We get 1.9 in our transfer budget, so. Hope, hoping to buy a actual player, but I'll sell for a new youth scout. And halfway through, we are we're in third. I mean, things are moving quick now. We're not doing a bunch of squad scrambling. Got a pretty good young core, so things are moving. Things are happening. Um, 28 points. We're only two points off of second. Guaranteed European spot right now. Well, not guaranteed. Well, actually, yeah. No, not guaranteed. This is the man I was saving up for. The reason why I was selling all those players because I actually wanted to bring in a player, was able to do that for 6.5 million, the Norse god Olden Thiago Holm. Bought him from a Norwegian side. I can't remember the name. I can see the crest. I really hate the fact I can't remember. 21 years of age. I think he's got 81 potential, so he has great potential, and hopefully we can just mold him into a world-class player. So with our three star or four star five star scout going to China for three years or three months to get some defenders, 
heading to Japan with our brand new 5 star 4 star scout to get some attackers. And finally our 3 star 3 star scout is going to South Korea to get some defenders. And Manager of the Month award in July, which I think we played like two games, so not that big of an award, but I'll well, still put it up in the trophy cabinet. At the end of the year, we did finish first in the league by, I mean, a pretty good amount. I mean, six points, but we had plus 20 goal difference from second place, so I think we were firing on all cylinders this year. We also won the EA Sports Cup again over St. Pat's, won 4-1. Ennis scored 24 goals, he was on fire all year. And Dickinson from that left wing position, 13 assists. So yeah, this is actually how the team is currently looking, playing that 4-3-3 holding. I mean, obviously that front three is lethal, midfield is very solid as well, back lines amazing as well. So, I mean, I hopefully this is the point where we don't look back anymore, we just go through, win the league, just win everything. And we can just look back at the, this season as our turning season. I mean, I think we could go far in the Conference League. Don't know about Europa League, so who knows what's going to happen. All right, starting off this next season, sending a five-star, five-star scout to Cameroon just for nine months. Sending a four-star, five-star scout to Nigeria. And finally, a five-star, four-star scout to Ghana. Ruben Dominguez has been sold to Romy inside FCSB for 2.2 million. Felix Leonard has been sold to Adana Demispor for 2.9 million. Halfway through the league, we are first. And by five points, which isn't that big of a deal, but hopefully we can pull ahead from this point on. Aitor Alonso will be joining the team from the free agents list as a goalkeeper. Just needed or just lacking in goalkeeper depth. So I'll sign him up, see if he can compete for the starting job. I won manager of the month in July again. But I only play, you know, played like two games again. And we're in the qualification rounds of the Champions League where we are drawn against the Netherlands side at PSV, who are a very good team. But first leg, we got a win. 3-1 to one win. And then we got 3-0'd in the second leg. One goal away from... Being in the Champions League, we crash out 4-3 to in aggregate, which is not good. But we are now in the Europa League, and we're not in that bad of a group. I mean, I don't even know who that first team is. I mean, it's FIFA who actually cares about the Italian League. I really do feel bad if you're an Italian who likes FIFA crew mode. You barely, I mean, half the teams in your league aren't even there. You lost your second division. I mean, seriously, EA Sports, get it together. I mean, Stuttgart are in there. Not, they're not that great, but I mean, they obviously have to be qualified for the Europa League. But it's better than like you know Bayern Munich, and then KV Korczyk. I don't remember where they're from. I know they're from one like Denmark, Austria, Belgium. They have to be from one of them. So not the not an impossible group, but who knows? Yeah, we won the league. And very convincingly, by 14 points. We're truly the top dogs now. But we lost the EA Sports Cup. So, I mean, I really could care less about the EA Sports Cup, if I'm being honest. And in the group, we finished second. Completely thought it would be totally different, but... We're going to the, we're going to the knockout stages. At least that's what I thought. So, obviously, I'm on Channel 4. I've only done Road to Glories in the major leagues. Obviously, England, I did one in France, one in Germany, one in Germany, one in Spain. By the time you're qualifying for a spot in Europe at that point, your team's usually absolutely stacked. So I've never worried about this like preliminary round. Because I've also always finished first. So I don't know what is happening here. I don't know what this is. I am scared because Porto is a very good team. So we may or may not be in the league. I don't know. Ennis was, was our top scorer with 19, but Nicholson was just behind him with 18. Holm and Dickinson led the team in assists with 10. So yeah, I mean, the, we're, the team does not need any improvement. We just need some more time to develop. 
So I am selling one of our day ones, one of our goalkeepers who's been in the club for quite a while, Patrick McCall, to Cardiff City for 1.7 million. Didn't want to do it, but he's just not progressing as quick as I would like. And joining the team from Aston Villa is Caleb Chukwomenka. Just signed him because, you know, like, why not? If I'm being fully honest, activated his release clause of 4.2 million. 71 overall. Just trying things out with how it works with buying players from different leagues. Because obviously I've never done this before. And also joining us is from Leicester is Vontae Daly Campbell for, again, his release clause of 5 million. So we got two good Premier League youngsters who can hopefully add some good value to this team. In the end, we're about to play the preliminary round against FC Porto. And we lost the first leg 3 to 1. Sending a Youth Academy Scout 5 star 5 scar to Denmark. Our 4 star 5 scar to Norway. And our 5 star 4 star to Sweden. And it's pretty much a formality at this point. 3 0 loss to Porto. We are officially out of the Europa League. And Toner will be going on a two-year loan move to Villarreal. I don't actually know if I showed him getting promoted because I honestly didn't think he would amount to anything, but because I promoted him when we were still playing a three-back and I was converting him to center mid, so I wasn't expecting him to play at all. But now that we are playing a back four, he's been our starting right back. He's got, I think, exciting. he's an exciting prospect, so you probably didn't know who he was when he was popping up the lineup. I also don't know how much you were actually looking. So yeah, that's what was happening with him. Chris Ennis will also be going on a two-year loan move. He is going to Ajax. That should be, obviously it's a huge step up, and that should be a really good experience for him. Um, in the league, we're second. Um, one point behind Shamrock Rovers, but it is still early in the year. Nushimura will be going on a two-year loan move to SC Braga. He's another one of those youth academy players that didn't think would amount to anything, but has actually been getting some good minutes. And we're now in the qualification round of the Champions League. We're facing off against Hajduk Split. Well, I have no clue who they are, where they're from. I think they might be the first. In, I think they might be from Croatia, which would explain why I've never heard of them. First leg, we ended up getting a two to one victory. And the second leg, we drew one to one. Aggregate score, we win three to two. We advance into the playoff round because. And now we're facing another team I've never heard of. I'm going to guess are from Greece. We won the first leg 2-1. But we lost the second leg 2-1 and lost on pens 4-3. Which means for the second the second year, no, third year, second time in the last three years, we're at one goal away from going into the Champions League. Very unfortunate, but we have to move on. Going in the Europa League, our group is no, there's not, I don't think there's really one top dog. Leicester City are obviously good, Sparta Praha are good, and Copenhagen are good. And we're obviously good. So I think this is really, if you're a neutral, this is probably the most interesting group because there is not one front runner or one bottom dog. Nico Dahl will be joining the team from the Youth Academy. Norwegian center midfielder, 68 overall, 86 to 94 potential. Look for him to be a stud. After he goes on a loan to Stade Bertois over in France for a year. And yeah, we won the league. 10 point win as well, obviously. We won the EA Sports Cup as well, 3 1 over Shamrock Rovers. And in the Europa League, we finished in third. It was definitely just not our year. So, yeah, Europe's over for this year. Unless we beat Basel in the preliminary round of the Conference League. Again, I have no clue how any of this stuff works, but shout out to Coventry City for at least getting far enough to qualify for a European spot. Dickinson led the team in goal scored with 28. And he also led the teams in goal scored with 13. He's obviously our best player. He's just that good. And looking at the squad, again, I don't think we need any changes. I think we just need a little bit more time. But yeah. And we're starting off this next season by sending out a player on loan, Apaya. He'll be going in a two-year loan move to SL Benfica. I think he could play at the club once he returns from his loan, which is obviously why I'm sending him out. And we're now to go into the preliminary round 
of the Conference League. Against Basel, we won the first leg 2-1. And we won the second leg 3-2, which I believe will now send us into the Conference League knockout stages. And it has, and we get a horrible draw as we're facing off against Club Bruges. But first leg, we drew 1-1, one one, so there's actually a chance we can, in the second leg, win. We actually won. We won 2-0, thanks to goal from Holman Booth. Our first ever European knockout win. Do I, mean, do I think this means we can win the entire Conference League itself? No. Do I think this is a good building block for the team? Yes. And in Republic of Ireland, sending our scout 5-star, five 5-star. Five and I won Manager of the Month for the month of March. Woo! It really means nothing at this point. Quarterfinals, we've now been drawn against Portuguese side SC Braga. Who spanked us. I mean, bent us over like a little kid, smacked us 4-1 in that first leg. But we drew them 1-1 in the second leg. But it doesn't make a difference. We crashed out of Europe. We won Manager of the Month again in May. Ruben Dickinson will be going on a short loan move to Atletico Madrid. It's the end of the year. Nothing big is going to be happening. We'll just send him out on loan. And if you guys know, if you have a really high potential player in FIFA and you don't really need him for the you know, second half of the year, like if it's just going to be a wash where you're just kind of like, I mean, obviously different leagues, you're just going to finish mid-table is not really a point. Send him out on loan. Their overall will increase very, like pretty much the minute they go out on loan, they'll go from like a 78 to an 84 or even higher. So... High potential, you don't really need them, send them out on loan. Halfway through the year, we're first in the league, two points above second place Sligo Rovers. And Nicholson is also going to be going out on loan. So our two best players, two highest potential players at, the, at those wing positions are both going out on loan for the rest of the season. And Nicholson will be joining one of my, one of my teams that I support, Everton. In the qualification rounds of the Champions League, we've been drawn against Jurgarden. I believe they're Swedish. Alou Berry will also be going on a loan to Genoa. First leg, we ended up winning 1-0 thanks to a goal from Booth. And the second leg, we win 2-1, 3-1 on aggregate thanks to goals from Busia and Farrell. Which means we've now made it to the playoff round. We're facing off against a pole. First leg, 3-0 victory. Second leg, 2-2 draw. We advance. We're in the Champions League group stages for the first time ever. And we couldn't have drawn a worse group. Real Madrid, Juventus, and Sparta Moscow. Now, I know, obviously, this is the Champions League. There's going to be some really good teams. But Real Madrid and Cal Piemonte Calcio are like the, two of the best teams in the entire game. And Spartak Moscow are also an extremely good team. So don't expect us to go far this year. Busia will be going on a two-year loan move to Lannis. He is a gone-in player who I personally really like. He's very quick, very good dribbler, very tall. So I would really like him to be a key player at us. So he's going to be going out on loan. See what he lo looks like when he comes back. And we won the league by 27 points. It's very obvious we're just going to win the league every year now. We also won the EA Sports Cup. And the third place in the Champions League group, only by one point, Piemonte Calcio finished last. Don't think anyone was expecting that. Which means we'll be in the pre preliminary round of the Europa League, facing off against SL Benfica. Juku Omenka led the team in goal score with 20. Busio was just behind him with 16. Holm led the team with 12 assists. So, I mean, this is how the team is looking now. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot to mention. So, the Boosty, Boosty actually didn't go out alone. So, what happens with my game, really my FIFA game, anytime I'm in, like, these past season three or four, the game will just crash out of nowhere. And if I don't save every, like, a minute, I obviously lose stuff. So, that lone move actually didn't happen. He stayed. He's been starting at that right wing position and playing very, very well. But yeah, I just wanted to clear up any confusion there. So, no, Chris Ennis has not gone on another two-year loan move to Ajax. But you remember when this happened two years ago? Where is he at the club? 
Toner also went on a two-year loan move to Villarreal. He's a right back. Where is he? They're free agents. Same with Nishimura, the Japanese winger we loaned out. I talked about this earlier with McKenna. He just disappeared. These guys didn't disappear. They're just free agents. I mean, like, it doesn't make any sense. These guys are under contract. They were out on loan. Why are they free agents not joining our club? So I had to do a little bit of business dealing, bring them in as players. But yeah, Ennis is now an 88 overall. Toner's up to an 80. Five-star, five-star scout going to Ireland just to get some players. Four-star, five-star going to Northern Ireland to get some players. And five-star, four-star to Scotland. Nico Dahl will be going in a two-year loan move to Sporting CP. He's, he, I really want him to play the club, but I just don't know where exactly he's going to fit in. So let's just send him out alone. And obviously now in the preliminary round against SL Benfica. 2-1 to one win in the first leg. 3-1 to one loss in the second leg. Crash out of the Europa League into the Conference League. So nothing big here. At least I thought of it at the time. Obviously, we're doing this series with Longford Town. And I just got a notification, a little, you know, a little email, that Eumann Kirkpatrick has been taken from our youth academy by Longford Town. We are Longford Town. He is in our youth academy, but I guess he isn't anymore. So we'll, we'll get back to that, but halfway through, we're in first, but only because of goal difference. Should do expect to pull ahead in the second half. Qualification round of the Champions League. We're facing off against, I believe that's Polish side, Vlek. First leg, 3-1 victory. Second leg, 2-2 draw. We're finally on the good side of this kind of big win in the first leg, draw in the second leg. We advanced 5-3 on aggregate. And we have faced off against Midland from Denmark in the playoff round. We drew them 1-1 one -one in the first leg. Drew them 1-1 one -one again in the second leg. But for the first time, we actually win the penalty shootout 4-3. Which means we are going to be in the Champions League in the group stage. And we have drawn another very tough group. Obviously Liverpool, one of the best teams in the game right now. Don't know what Roma FC are like right now. Also don't know what Frankfurt are like. So, there could be some surprises. I mean, last year I thought, last time we were in the Champions League, I thought Pierre Monte Calcio was going to, Real Madrid go in the group. Pierre Monte Calcio finished last. So, obviously, a lot of things can happen, and we'll see how it all goes. So, yeah, back to the Ewan Kirkpatrick saga. Um, so, yeah, he's left to join, he's left our youth academy to join our youth academy. He's a six overall. He has one passing. So yeah, FIFA really does not like it when you use one of these Irish teams and you go pretty far. He's on a negative one month contract. I I, I don't know. He's a one overall. And honestly, what is becoming kind of tradition at this point? Halfway through, it's pretty close, and then we just pull away in the second half. We won the league. Also won the EA Sports Cup. We finish second in the Champions League. We're going to the Champions League knockout stages. We drew against Chelsea. I don't know what they're like anymore. They could be still. They could still be great. They could be bad. I don't know. So we got a couple of players leaving the club. Um, Kirkpatrick. I have no clue what's happening there. Back with goalkeeper Mane. And our two signings, Daly Campbell and Juku Amenka, have. Been, I'm just not gonna. They're asking for way too much money. I'm willing to give them. So I'm gonna let them go. They were, they were honestly a little bit of experiment that I think paid off very well, but they're no longer playing. Thank them for their service. They played very well for us when they were there, but we're on to bigger and better things. Ruben Dickinson scored 39 goals this year as he's, I mean, he's obviously 92 overall. He's, he's proving himself as the best player on this team. And Holm as an 85 overall that led the team in 16 assists. So yeah, Dickinson is now a 92 overall, absolute stud. Ennis is a 90, Holmes an 85, Rooney's up to an 83, so is Toner. Kelly and goal is an 82. So we're, we are really starting to get there. I mean, we're very, very close. I'd say probably three more seasons. We should be one of the best teams in the world.
5 star 5 star scout going to Ireland, 4 star 5 star to England, 5 star 4 star to Scotland, who really cares at this point, just need to get it out there to show we're still actually trying to build a team. So yeah, round of 16 against Chelsea in the Champions League. So I've got to take a picture of the first game. We won 3-0. If we blow this lead, this team is forever cursed. We tried to. We really did try to blow that lead, but they got a red card in the 53rd minute. They won 2-0, but on aggregate, we win 3-2. We advance in the Champions League knockout. And we're drawn against Piemonte Calcio, who actually finished last in our Champions League group three seasons ago, I believe it was. We lost the first leg 3-2. And we lost the second leg 3-1. We're done. We are out of Europe. We played well. We got pretty far, but it's a disappointing result, but we can build on it. Yeah, close halfway through the league. Ibrahim Buabani is joining the team from the free agents list. Just figured we need to bring in some extra players. Qualification round of the Champions League is now happening. We're facing off against Pagon. First leg won 2 to 1. Second leg won 2 to 1 as well. Now for the qualification round. Well, that was qualification now for the playoffs. Facing off against Midland yet again. 3-1 win in the first leg. 3-0 win in the second leg. We're going to the group stages. And we're actually in a very winnable group. Obviously, Inter are great, obviously, but Salzburg, Lokomotiv Moscow are not bad teams you'd want in your group. I do seriously think we, we could win the group. We won the league again, obviously. Won the cup. It did go to penalties, though, but we still won. We did finish second in that Champions League group, but I'm not going to complain. And we're are drawn against Barcelona, which I am going to complain because, wow, we were screwed either way because we didn't face Barcelona. We were going to face PSG. So I think our Champions League journey is going to be over pretty short, shortly. I mean, looking at this team. We just need more time to let these young guys develop. I mean, our worst player is 83 overall, and they still are very solid. I mean, 93 overall, Dickinson, he's one of the best in the world. Ennis is one of the best in the world. We just need a little bit more time. A little bit more time. It's a little bit strange of a move, but I am loaning Jaden Nicholson out on a two-year loan move to Chelsea. Because... Busia is now one of the better players at the club. I really want him to succeed, so I'm moving him into that right wing position. Round of 16 against Barcelona. Surprisingly, it was only 3-2 in the first leg. But unfortunately, it was 3-2 in the second leg with Barcelona winning both. We crashed out 6-4 on aggregate. Halfway through the league, obviously it's close. Adriano Lopez is joining the team to add some depth to that left wing position from the youth, not youth academy from free agents list. Same goes for Jules Michaels. Qualification round now for the Champions League, facing off against Romanian side FCSB. 3 0 win in the first leg. 3 0 win in the second leg. We advance to the playoff round, where we are facing off against AIK from Sweden. 3 2 victory in the first leg. 2-2 draw on the second leg. We advance. We're going to the Champions League. In another very winnable group, Villarreal, Club Bruges, and Galatasaray are our opponents. I really think we could win this one. Obviously, won the league very convincingly. However, in the first round of the cup, we got knocked out by Waterford. So, not good. And we also finished third in our Champions League group. So, just was not our year this year. Which means we will be in the preliminary round of the Europa League for next season. We're facing off against Lyon. Boussiat led the team in a goal scored with 25, which is obviously why he's now playing for us. And Dickinson led the team in assists with 17. And we're now fully committed to the back to the 3-4-3. Always wanted to do it, but could never really commit to it. But now I have, especially with the talent that we have, Nicholson. Eventually, when he comes back alone, I'm thinking I'm going to recall him. He could play at the right wing position. But yeah, this team is stacked. We're starting to look really, really good. And I think we can really challenge for the Champions League next year.
And now we have that game against Mion in the preliminary round of the Europa League. 1-1 one one draw on the first leg. A little bit concerning. But we get the win in the end. 3-2 in that second leg. 4-3 on aggregate. We're going into the group stages. Well, actually, no. Knockout stages. And we've been drawn against Wolves, who I had a little bit of a fling with as a fan. However, Man City are in the Europa League. Would like to just point that out. Um, we drew against them 2-2. And in the second leg, just fully took over 4-0 victory. We beat them 6-2 in aggregate. And in the quarterfinals, we're now facing off against St. Etienne. 1-0 win in the first leg. 3-0 win in the second leg. Let's just keep moving on. Semifinals were against Manchester City. Beat them in the first leg 3-2 thanks to a very late goal from Fusia. And 2-1 in the second leg thanks to a late goal from Nicholson. 5-3 in aggregate. We're in our first European final. And we're facing off against Piemonte Calcio, who we have had quite the amount of run-ins with. And we won. Double from Ennis. 2-1 win. We won the Europa League. We're guaranteed to be in the Champions League next year. And I really think we could win it. Obviously in the league, we're going to win. I have to sign a player from Asia, so I just signed this random dude. Super Cup Final, a little bit of something different. Uh, does not go our way. was hoping that we could have won. You should add another trophy, but not the case. Champions League now, we've been drawn in group with Milan, Shakhtar, Donetsk, and Genk. I think we could easily win this one. In the league, obviously killed everyone. Won the cup. Obviously lost in that Super Cup. And finished second in our group, which means we're advancing to the round of 16. And we'll be facing off against German side Bayer Leverkusen. Dickinson led the team in goal score with 24. Also led the team in goal assists with 10. So this is how we're actually playing now, playing a 3-4-1-2. Obviously back line goalkeeper stay the same forever. Booth, Holmes, center mids. But now Nicholson and Lopez are out on the wings. Dickinson's the attacking mid. Bustia and Ennis are up top. This team is unstoppable, unbeatable. The clock is ticking. We are starting to run out of seasons where we can actually keep going. But I really think this year could be our year. Round of 16 facing off against German side Bayer Leverkusen. In the first leg, got a 2-0 victory thanks to a goal from Michaels. And another 2-1 victory in the second leg. 4-2 in aggregate. We beat them. We advance. In the quarterfinals, we're facing off against Manchester City, who we did just beat in the Europa League last year. I just want to say, look at the company we're in. I mean, PSG, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Milan. We, we deserve to be up here. We are one of the best teams in the world. First leg, 2-0 victory over Milan, Manchester City. They did beat us in the second leg, 2-1, but thanks to that late goal from Ennis, we're in the Champions League quarterfinals. Semifinals, I was wrong. We've been drawn against English side Liverpool, who, if I was playing these games, I would absolutely love because I don't know about you guys, but my favorite team to face is Liverpool because they're so bad. All you have to do is beat their first line of press, have some players run in behind, it's guaranteed goals. First leg, we drew 1-1, one to one, thanks to a, two very late goals from both teams. I mean, 88th minute, 89th minute. But then we won the second game, 2-1, to 3-2 to in aggregate. Champions League final. The Champions League final against Paris Saint Germain. PSG Longford Town Champions League final. And of course, somehow, of course, it's in their home stadium, the Parc des Princes. However, I think that we as a club have gained, you know, if this was real, I think everyone would be a fan of Longford Town, the underdog mentality. We're from Ireland, we're not even supposed to be here. Knocking out some of England's best teams in Man City and Liverpool to get here. I think the neutral, everyone would be cheering for us. And this is the lineup we're going with. Obviously, Kelly's in goal. Toner, Murray, Rooney, back three. Holman, Booth, center mids. Nicholson, Lopez on the wings. Dickinson is the attacking mid. Busi and Ennis are the strikers. PSG are lining up in a 4-3-3 flat. Um, Donnarumma, Hakimi, Zagadou, Mbappe are the only players I recognize. Yeah. In the 27th minute, we get a chance to get him behind. Busia 
kind of beats his man. They get a little bit tangled up. Ball is cleared away. Booth goes to win the, he the header. Cannot do so. Lopez is quick to get the recovery. Uh, just unnecessary skill move because why not? Crossed into Ennis. That is also cleared away. And now PSG have a chance to counter. They got numbers going forward. But Toner, excellent challenge. Plays the ball into Busia. Busia then clips it into Lopez. And with his weak foot, puts it past the goalkeeper to make it 1-0 in the 30th minute. In the 57th minute now, PSG are attacking. Brilliant win by us. Dickinson is taking it inside. Should have gotten a card there. But then Booth is taken out from behind by their captain left back, who was on a yellow already. He gets a he gets a red card. Honestly, I think that first challenge also should have been a yellow. It was not even a foul was given. But as you can see from this angle, didn't even get the ball, just took out his ankle. And now they are down to 10 men and down 1-0. In the 62nd minute, PSG are on the attack. We're just kind of sitting back defending. Nicholson does get beat, which happens a lot, but who cares? Ball's plan played in. I mean, they're just working it on the top of our box, quite concerning. But Nicholson wins the ball back, gets the ball into Holm. Holm quickly gets it out to Ennis. Ennis turns, and Busia is in behind the defense, uses his pace to get around the defender, kind of. Takes a very strange, big first touch, but gets it into Ennis, who converts it from in the 18 to put us 2-0 up. Pretty much guaranteeing a Champions League win. Can't speak too early, though. In the 85th minute, PSG have a chance to attack. And it looks like a very good one. Murray's shifting over. Definitely a handball, but the ref didn't call it. Played advantage. And they're in our box now, which is not very good. Ball's whipped in, but cleared away. And it's now as the ball. He flicks it with his head onto Busia, who is nobody near him. Just uses his sheer pace, staying in behind the defense. Taking a little bit outside, looking for that pass across to Dickinson. Gets it on the volley, puts it past Donnarumma. 3-0 victory, 89th minute, we've won. But right after that goal scored on the immediate kickoff, PSG get the ball. They're toying around with it a little bit. You know, just trying to establish some possession, but we're blood, we're blood hungry. We're thirsty. We want the ball. They play it in. Booth wins it. Plays it into Ennis. Ennis into Lopez. Lopez beats one man. A little bit of dribbling. I mean, come on. You can't beat that. And now he gets to run in behind the defense. Lining things up. Big cross back post for Busia. Weak foot finish. 4-0 victory. That should be it. And it was 4-0 victory thanks to that goal from Lopez, goal from Ennis, goal from Dickinson, and obviously that final goal from Busia. There it is, Longford Town, UEFA Champions League champions. And that's going to be to the end. There's nothing left to do. We have proved we're the best team in the world. We were at one point the worst team in the world. And we just can really just celebrate and enjoy life now. 4-0 victory in the final as well over PSG. Big game. But yeah, I mean, look at that. Five-star team, 86 overall attack. Oh, it's only because our bench and strikers are horrible. 90 midfield, 90 defense. And yeah, this is our last chance to say goodbye to what is an absolutely stud team. I mean, even look, even look at the bench. It's very solid from there as well. But yeah, I just want to thank all these guys for their service. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Subscribe if you're new. I don't know what I'm doing next. I can't lie. I'm just trying to figure out what to do next, but whatever it is, hope it'll be fun. It's JTB Gaming, signing off.